Good morning and welcome on this uh, Easter sunrise service wherein we gather in the name of Jesus Christ and we gather because Christ Jesus is risen. We begin in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's start with a prayer. We pray. Gracious God, creator of all things, you give us new life, you give us hope, you give us joy. That all comes through the risen Jesus Christ and so we, we praise him today We're reminded that we desperately need Jesus and so today this Easter help us to remember that in the name of Jesus we pray amen I have to tell you that uh, the question I'm often asked is well what's my favorite specifically it has to do with church the uh, favorite uh, service favorite season of year uh, favorite classes, favorite books of the Bible. And as a pastor, the reality is that I'm not supposed to have favorites. I'm supposed to like them all equally, whether it's contemporary or traditional or blended. I'm supposed to answer that, well, they're all very meaningful to me. And when it comes to Christmas or Easter, I'm supposed to say they all have their unique place in the church here and all tell the story of Jesus. And so, I'm not supposed to have those favorites and I'm not supposed to tell you that. And having said that, as I stand out here at this Easter sunrise service, I have to make a confession that of all of the services in the year, one of my favorite to, to lead, to participate in, is the Easter sunrise service. And in part that's because we're outside and it's unique, it's different, the setting. And so this morning, I bring you a little bit of that outside and a reminder of what it is we do. It's with a little bit of disappointment, I have to say, that I gather out here and, and you are not here and we have not drugged chairs out from the Fellowship Center and, and uh, made people wipe them off because it got humid in the night. And yet I'm reminded as well of God's great love through His Son, Jesus Christ, and the reason why I'm out here in the first place and why you are watching. Today what I want to do is I want to share with you from the Gospel of John chapter 20, the resurrection account. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw the stone had been rolled away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as of yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. 
Then the disciples return to their home. Recently, in our world, we've been confronted with much uncertainty. Now the reality is the world has always been full of uncertainty. It's been an uncertain place. Whether we'll remain healthy, whether we'll be able to pay bills, whether uh, our children will grow up the way we want them to. All of these questions. And in the midst of all of this uncertainty, we are reminded of the good news of Easter. We're reminded that Jesus speaks to our uncertainty. Today, as we read this account from John chapter 20, the thing that strikes me the most about it is there's a certain realness to it. A certain sense that you can feel the shock and the wonder and the surprise of Mary and of Peter and of the unnamed disciple who many believe is John. We can feel their surprise and as we continue in the account we can feel the surprise of the other disciples too who who gaze upon the open and empty tomb. As I think about this real, this authentic feeling of the account from John and as well from the other Gospels, quite frankly, I'm reminded that Easter is God's certain victory in the midst of our uncertainty. I think about that, God's certain victory in the midst of our uncertainty. And what that means for us is that when we as as God's people, we too can, like Mary and Peter and, and uh, John and all the other disciples, we can gaze in the tomb ourselves, the open and empty tomb, and we can be reminded, well, that Christ is victorious. And today we can gather here, me in my case, outside and you wherever you're at, and proclaim the words that Christ is risen, he's risen indeed. Alleluia. And in the midst of our uncertainty, these words ring loud and remind us that we need not fear. Christ is alive. He's risen. And so today we rejoice in that. If you'll join with me in prayer, we pray. Merciful and gracious God, creator of all things, again we gather the sunrise to worship, to rejoice, to give thanks in your great love through your son, Jesus Christ. Today, we're reminded that sin is defeated. The victory is won through the cross, that we need not fear, that in all of our uncertainty, Easter is the certainty that we need. Lord, we pray this now in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. And now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit strengthen and keep you in the true faith, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give He is my joy 
the price it has been paid for Jesus bled and suffered for my heart and he was raised to overthrow the grave to this I hold my sin has been defeated Jesus now Yet not I, but through Christ in me.